Radio, NBC News Radio. KCAA Radio, Loma Linda, where no listener is ever left behind. Welcome to the Fabulous Lifestyle Radio Show, where we talk about food, fashion, finance, and foundations of life. We are live on KCAA Radio Broadcasting Network, 1050 AM, 102.3 and 106.5 FM. KCAA is affiliated with CNBC, NBC News, and NBC Sports. We are sponsored by Sheltered Studios, Fire Connect, and Building Solid Foundation. Hi, this is Cornelius. Welcome to the Fabulous Lifestyle Show here. And I have here Rihanna next to me, my guest host. And we have on the phone, Maura Graver. Maura, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Hey, Maura. Hi. Good Hi. afternoon. Good, good. A couple of weeks ago, we were saying we were talking about Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving etiquette. And so this week, we're going to allow people to call in. We already have some things wrote down. If you want to call in and tell us about your experience, you can call in at area code 909 Seven nine two five two two two, but we do have some, so we'll start off with that, and we'll see if we get any callers. So, Mora, you have a very interesting to start off with. So, can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, I got a, a direct message on my Instagram Etiquipedia account from a woman who was frantic because her husband, every year, he considers himself a, a wine connoisseur. She said. He's really a bit of a wine snob. And every year they take with them to Thanksgiving dinner, the same house, they take with them some really nice bottles of wine. And she said every year they give them to the host and, and hostess. And they mean for them to be with the dinner because they feel that the host and hostess are drinking rather cheap, inexpensive wines that aren't very good. Her husband can't stand the wines that they serve. And she said, you know, we're bringing them as a host and hostess gift. And she said they, they, they take them into the kitchen and they never see those bottles again. The host and hostess serve the same cheap wine that they were planning on serving and served the year before and year before and year before. And she said, my husband is... He doesn't want to do this anymore. He doesn't want to go. She had talked him into going, and you know she wanted to know if there was any way that they could politely deal with this. Well, first off, thinking of it as a host and hostess gift, then they're going to think it is a host and hostess gift. You're brought a gift. You don't have to open it up and share it with everyone. If you're the host and hostess and someone has brought you bottles of wine, there's there's no requirement that you serve it. It's nice for you to serve it or to offer to serve it at the meal. But if they said, you know, that we brought you a hostess gift or whatever, I said, bring it as part of the, the meal when I wrote back to her. Bring it as part of the meal and give her and, and her husband something separate as a host and hostess gift. And set yours down on the table. You, your husband can even open... If there's a red wine, go ahead and open the red wine and say, oh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and open it here so it could breathe. And go ahead and open it right in front of them. Um, that way it won't wind up in their kitchen cabinet somewhere where it's never going to be seen again or enjoyed by your husband, and you've given them something else. Well, isn't that similar to what we talked about last week about when you have people bring stuff or someone bring it? Be clear on what to bring and what it's for. Right. But some people do bring a host or a hostess gift just as a matter of course. It's a nice thing to do. If someone is serving, you know, if someone's especially going to all the trouble of cooking a meal for you, and it's people that you, you see yearly or regularly, then you want to bring something, uh, flowers or something. Don't bring flowers that, that need a vase because the hostess doesn't have time to drop everything and put them in a vase. Something that's already in the vase is much easier to deal with. And then the hostess doesn't have to go to any work. If you bring something that, that you're expecting them to serve, you have to explain to them, we're going to have this with dinner, and we think it'll pair beautifully with your stuffing or whatever, and, but then bring something else 
as a little gift to them if you are not contributing in any other way. Because a lot of hosts and hostesses, they don't want contributions to the meal. They feel it's their kitchen, their domain. They don't want anyone bringing anything in. Okay, so it seems like to I don't know, what do you think, Brandon? It seems like to me that if this happens, you said this goes on year after year, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, if this goes on year after year, like at some point in time you would think that they would talk to them and tell them, hey, this is what we want, especially if the husband's doing it and he's the one who, who gets upset and he doesn't want to go anymore. You think he would talk to them and say, look, when I bring this wine, I bring it so we can drink it with the meal. And then that way you have a clear understanding of maybe next time since they're going to take it and just put it away, maybe we'll bring the same cheap wine they're used to. Well, I think the yep. point is, and correct me if I'm wrong, Maura, but the point is that he doesn't want the che cheap wine. Um, and so <laughs> exactly. I, would, <laughs> I would think, and obviously I, I, I'm, I don't know much about etiquette, and this is something, and that's what you guys can touch base on, but I would think that it's okay to say, hey, you know, let's have this as part of the meal, and uh, let's all consume it or whatever, and leave it at that but i don't know if that's the proper way of handling no, no, it no that but. would be you would think so that's what i say i mean maybe the first time it happens okay the second time but if this is an ongoing thing you would think someone would have had that conversation by now oh absolutely and just like uh, maura was mentioning even putting it on the table i think is totally okay i would assume so of course but again yeah. that's without well, the, the knowledge of etiquette is, that you guys have the problem is the operative word throughout the whole thing was hostess gift right a gift is a gift correct right Correct. You don't have to open, you know, someone brings you a box of chocolates. Right. You're not obligated to open it up and offer it to everyone. Exactly. It's your box of chocolates. You might want to set it aside to enjoy later. Yeah. Definitely. Especially when you you're, tell you're... someone it's a gift, mm -hmm. it, it, it takes it out of your control. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm sure he's probably looking forward to those nice bottles of wine every year, too. Mm hmm. Exactly. Right, so, well, next year, maybe he won't go, but if he does, his wife should tell him, hey, you know, we have a year from Thanksgiving this year to Thanksgiving next year to get it straightened out of how we want to do it and what it's for, and you can explain it to him. That gives him a chance if he gets upset. By that time, maybe he won't be so upset when Thanksgiving come around and they can enjoy themselves. Exactly. Well, and, and, you know, there's there's the reverse. My husband was a, a international wine judge for many years, along wow. with, you know, running the Olive House, the Graber Olive House. And he was always being given bottles of wine when they were done judging because people would send in cases uh, for judging because so they needed enough for all the different judges that were involved. But they had a lot of wines left over. And so my husband was always being given wine, and every year, uh, you know, we we started going to one particular family member's who was hosting every year, and they started expecting the wine every year, mm -hmm. good wine. And so Cliff would pull out three or four really good bottles of wine, bring them with us, and we would have them at the dinner. Well, the wine judging he hasn't done now probably in – six or seven years and they'd still like to see some nice bottles of wine coming through the door <laughs> that right. can get pretty expensive oh, if absolutely. it's no longer free to you yeah right so so that was just we're talking about wine does the hostess have a responsibility when people come for let's say thanksgiving or anything to regulate the people drinking the wine no, and that's the that's the big problem. Mm -hmm. You've got to really watch it. If you've got if you've got an open bar situation, we used to go to a, you know one a family members you know when I was younger, and they had a bar set up, and you know people would just go help themselves, and you know I didn't find out later until I was older and became a hostess myself. You know when you have bought a large bottle of something and it's completely gone at the end of the night and you had bought it with one particular person in mind and then found out two other guys had split the thing and you're wondering how on earth they poured themselves home. You're liable yeah. for anything they do. Wow. So, 
So we had someone at a family at a family Christmas dinner several years ago offer um, my I, he, I saw him grabbing my son and a couple of the other younger guys and inviting them out back. And he, he had brought cigar and brandy, thinking this was a smart idea. My son wasn't 21. Ooh. And I went outside and said, no, 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 come on in. I said, he's 18. You can't give him alcohol. Why? Why not? Why not? Oh, I wow. said, you cannot give him. My, the, the family member whose house it was at happens to be an attorney. And the next morning was furious because of the mess that the guy left outside with all of the, the cigar wrappers and cigar butts and all the ashes and everything else. And he sent out an email telling people what the law is if people leave your home drunk that you have served in your home. And he said, no more alcohol to minors. In fact, you know, we really don't want it in the house. He's wow. married to a Mormon. They don't drink. Wow. So, Dude, that's... He made it very clear in his email if this particular relative, he didn't address it to anyone. It was just everyone in general. If this particular relative happens to come back, um, you know, do not bring the alcohol with you. If you do, do not offer it to anyone under age because three of the young men outside were under 21. Wow. So, and, that, and that's that, good because we, excuse me, because we have, Christmas coming up, and then we have New Year's coming up. Yep. Mm -hmm. And those are big days, so if that's good news. So the people who are planning on hosting these particular events and these parties, knowing that now they have a responsibility to police and make sure that they maintain or try to somewhat have people maintain their drinking because they're all liable in case something should happen afterwards. Yep. Exactly. And you don't want to be yeah, liable scary. for that. Oh my gosh, that's so. Scary. If you know, with with any type, if you've got like a wine tasting room, something like that. The different wineries down in Temecula, those would be good places to call and ask them exactly what yeah. are the rules. Yeah, and you know how do you how do you stop if somebody's you know being overserved or you feel they're being overserved or they're you know they're drinking everyone's uh, little taste there, not just not just their own you got to find out, you know, what are the laws? If you don't know, Google it. Look it up. Right, right. I mean, that's important, like you say, because by your son and your nephew being uh, under 21, I mm -hmm. mean, we know all the – that's one of the leading causes of death for people in that age group. And so if you serve alcohol or you do these things, you know, just to be a cool person or to help them out and something happens, can you imagine – the liability for is, you know, your thoughts and the, the way, like you say, you're upset, what the parents would think. So we just want to oh, make yeah. sure that we're really uh, careful about who we have drinking and who at our house serves the drinks. Exactly. So mm -hmm. you've got to make sure that someone else isn't, you know, you may have everything set up so that you're keeping an eye on everyone, but then you've got, you, you know, got some cousin or some uncle or something that shows up and throws a monkey wrench into it yeah. by offering the younger kids so he'll be the cool one uh, or she'll be the cool one offering them something that they shouldn't be having legally right so it's problem all around yes okay we're going to be taking a break in a couple of minutes but back to where we started so if you bring something specifically that you want to serve or you want to serve just for someone special. So as soon as you walk through the door, as soon as you get in or prior to even going, you should call your host and let them know that's what your plan is. Correct? Exactly. I, I would, I would let, you know, if it's something that where it's, it's it, your in-laws and you're afraid to say anything and you don't want to deal with the fallout afterward or if, you know, or there's been some kind of tension or anything throughout the year, you know, you're just going to have to, you know, either suck it up and, and say something, you know, but I would just go about it in a very nice way. But remember, if you call it a gift, you are giving it to that person. 
it's not a gift for everyone at the dinner. Yeah. So, right. I mean, you could always pull it out right as everyone's sitting down and say, we brought a surprise for everyone at the table and pull it out along with your corkscrew. Okay. You know, that's another way of handling it. Yes, yes. But okay. I would get something small. As an, you know, it doesn't have to be as expensive as a, as a fine bottle of wine. I would get something small to offer to the host and hostess as a hostess gift. See, that if, makes if sense. You, if you're traditionally bringing one. Absolutely, and that makes a lot of sense, and I know you can agree. Yes, yes, yes. And on that note, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Teresa Lawrence helps us all reconnect with imagination through her renowned Leadership of Play coaching program. Schedule a session with Teresa on Instagram at your trueness to ignite creativity and pursue huge dreams once more. Don't let your spark fade. DM Teresa at your trueness today and reclaim the magic of dreaming. Tired of qualifying your leads and not getting the right clients for you? Join the finest women in real estate and learn how to attract the best clients and increase your referral network. Call now at 951-378-5316. 951-378-5316. Then become one of the finest women in real estate. This is Steve Matley. Join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio Talk Show. I spent decades as a professional construction manager, business owner, real estate developer, and a college educator, and I enjoy learning new things from other people. We talk a lot about real estate business and finance, but we cover a diverse range of other topics as well. Some of the topics we've discussed in the past few months include real estate investing, leadership, higher education, ADUs, marketing using technology, multifamily rental property, business strategy, entrepreneurship. You never know who may show up or what they may talk about. So join us right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio. Hey guys, it's Damon, Mr. Foxy, Damon Hart, and I'm here with the Real Men of Real Estate. And I just want to say, hey, come and watch us this Sunday, 1 p.m., live, every Sunday, okay? We're going to be on KCAA Radio, 1050 AM, 106.5 FM. If you got a minute, just tune in. We can't wait to have you here. I'm going to be there. If you can't make it on there, we're going to be at Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, or Android app on Building Solid Foundations channel. So tune in. But you know what you got to do in the meantime. Keep it foxy. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. FireUp Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including, inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Okay, we're back. Remember again, if you want to call in and give us some of your experience or your Thanksgiving, uh, happenings, area code 909-792-5222. Okay, Maura, we have one here. We're going to call this one uh, My Etiquette Problem. Okay, and this one it says, uh, apparently this is a, a woman, and a, a wife and a mother. She says, so I try copying some of your fancier table settings for my in-laws and family and guests. Of them, A lot of them use the wrong utensils. And they were very confused about how to use it. 
So my husband thought it was silly of me to go through all that trouble to do it again. But I really like my sons to grow up knowing these niceties at the t uh, of the table. So my thoughts, and you help me out, is that, of course, you want your kids to be, what they say, well-rounded. Of course. Well-rounded. But is it really at Thanksgiving, is it time to do that? I mean, of course, you want to impress everybody at your table. You want to have a good time. But if your purpose is so your sons can grow up with all these table niceties, wouldn't it be better to just do it for them on the side? That way everybody else doesn't have to have the problem of trying to know how to do it, to be confused or feel bad because they don't know how to use all the utensils and glasses? Well, this was another one that came to me through Instagram. And Instagram is a great place to find um, usually what not to do with, with <laughs> place settings and, and tables in general. Um, so, some are just absolutely beautiful. Women just knock themselves out. And a few men, too, um, you know, have on there just knock themselves out with gorgeous tables. And I love a beautifully set table. Um, it, I understood her thinking on it. And I used to do nine-course etiquette dinners for adults. And mm. we had a very formal place setting where we had the dessert utensils up above the plate. And the first couple of seminars, I had to tell everyone, don't touch those because I noticed people automatically, the dessert fork looked a lot like a salad fork, and they would automatically reach above the plate and grab that for salad. And I've seen my husband do it at a luncheon, too, and asked him why he did it later, and he said all the other men were eating with their dessert fork, so I didn't want them to look uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, we were the only one. I said, that's, that's not a good enough reason. Um, the... You know, I, like I said, I understood, understood what this woman was going for, and I and you should be able to read a place setting and navigate your way through. And I think that's what she wanted for her young sons. She said she wanted to, you know, develop them. I think she probably also wanted a daughter, but she's got a couple of sons, so <laughs> she she was upset. She said they were using the wrong bread plates, the wrong glasses, the wrong utensils. So one of the big problems I've noticed with a lot of these table setups that people will photograph and, and put on Instagram is they're too close together. They're trying to cram too many people into one table. So you can't have big elaborate place settings, you know, that have got multi utensils at them. If you don't have enough room for each one to be spaced properly so that everyone knows their bread plate and their glasses your your bread is always on the left i say roll dinner roll r-o-l-l -L has four letters l-e-f-t four letters over on the right drink glass water all have five letters so do word knife so do spoon okay so you've got knives and spoons and your glasses on the right you've got your fork and your roll on the left anything above the plate you use last and this is something that if you don't have the space for it, I went into a, to teach an etiquette dinner at the uh, Kellogg School of Management one year. And the woman in charge of the place, when I went into the restaurant, I always arrive early. You joined me, Cornelius, at, at the Claremont Colleges right. uh, this past spring. And I, we walked in, and, and what did we find? Everything 100 was wrong. place settings that were basically a fork, a knife, and a spoon, all in the wrong placement. Just Well, they were just thrown tossed in the middle of what was supposed to be the place setting. They were set there. And you and I went around and set a hundred places. So people actually knew, you know, it was a buffet. They knew where they were supposed to be sitting. And hopefully we're going to know, you know, after I explain, which were their forks and which were their knives and spoons and where to put their glasses. But... When I walked in to Kellogg School of Management, it's a, a beautiful place where they had a fabulous dinner. Uh, but the place setting, I walked in and I had a, a trainee with me, and all of the soup spoons were to the left of the salad fork. And I said, what's going on with the soup spoons? We need to move all these. And the woman said, oh, no, this is the new way. 
She said, I, I've just hired someone who used to work at the Beverly Hills Hilton. And he said, this is the new way. No, it's not the new way. At the Beverly Hills Hilton, they're probably guilty of the same thing that everyone else is that's in catering and has large wedding receptions or events, fashion shows, that sort of thing, where they try to squeeze 10 people into a table for six or eight, where everything is pushed together. So no one knows what's theirs. So the, the soup spoon to the right of the knives was going into the forks on the next place setting. And this young man thought that that's where the spoon went. But so Maura, we're setting all the place settings with the spoon in the wrong spot. But isn't that unfair in a situation like that? That oh, you, you you said it, but not only that, even with the lady who wants her sons to learn, and she has the stuff for all the other guests. That when you right. come here, I mean, if they haven't had the training, so why would you put it out there? Even though you want your sons to learn it or your kids to learn it, but if you just come to dinner and you haven't had, like, say, this formal training, even like we were talking this right, this left, this life, people are like, huh, huh? Because the majority of time when people eat, they'll have one spoon and one fork and they'll just use the same utensils for everything. Mm -hmm. So now exactly. you come into this environment and you've got six glasses, 10 spoons, 10 forks, and how you're supposed to know how to navigate that if you haven't been taught. So of course well, now people's, watch, are, people's uncomfortable and they don't want to go there. You're supposed to watch the yeah, host and hostess. Uh, yeah, but see, if the host is not doing it, let's say, for example, you're you're trying to do it and you don't know. You don't, you don't know you're supposed to watch the hostess. See, all these things you don't know, and that's why it's important to have some pre-training or to train people because now you have these people, they feel really bad. You know, they're coming here, and then you're, if you're the host and you're looking at them and, you know, oh, they're using the wrong this, they're using the wrong that. So now people are un uncomfortable when all they wanted to do, they just wanted to come in and have Thanksgiving dinner with you. And so exactly. I think that puts them in a very bad position because they're coming to enjoy Thanksgiving dinner and you spring this, I want to be super fancy on them, and they have no idea of what to do. So now they're uncomfortable and you're, you're not comfortable because they don't know what they're doing. So I think if you're well, going to have... Well, I figured out, uh -huh. figured out a way to do it with the dessert utensils. Okay. And that was, I did them in the French manner. So I would set the place settings in the American or European style, all with the tines facing up and the bowls of the soup spoons facing up, the dessert utensils I would turn upside down above the plate. When people would see them upside down differently from the rest of the utensils at the place setting, they automatically stop from picking them up, thinking, why are they upside down? This must be some kind of surprise or something. And they wouldn't touch them. The same way I got people to use guest towels in the bathroom. I, I would buy these paper guest towels and have some beautiful uh, hand-embroidered towels that my grandmother had given me that are probably 100 years old now that I, you know, just like for show. And, you know, you can't put them behind glass. They're just hanging on a rack there. But I would put out nice paper guest towels that are very clean and hygienic, and each one would use one. Well, what I determined was people weren't using them because I was cleaning out the wastebasket before each dinner started. And what I would do then was I thought, what if I try crumpling one up very obviously as if someone used it? And people do look for cues and clues on what they should do when they're in, in, in an unfamiliar environment. Once I started crumpling up a clean towel and tossing it in, just as if someone had used, used one after, after washing their hands, once I started doing that, no one touched the towels that were hanging. They all used the paper towels. Okay, that's good. Like I say, unfamiliar is usually uncomfortable. But we're going to take a break in a minute. But, yes, I mean, so I think, like I said, because if, if they're not familiar with it, therefore they're not comfortable. And so if they're not right. comfortable, they, they can't really enjoy, relax and enjoy themselves. So like we said last week, you want your guests to come there and feel very comfortable and very welcome. And I think when you spring a situation like that on them, like I said, they're uncomfortable and it, it makes for a bad experience unless you tell them and they go, oh, yeah, I'd like to learn it. 
But you know, if they're like if anything else, if you're not taught, you're not trained, you don't know how to do it. So we're gonna well, get. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I suggested to this woman that if if it was really a teaching moment for her kids, it would also be a teaching moment for her guests, but not be obvious with the guests. Just say to the kids, okay, now we're gonna now you guys don't forget you guys are gonna use the first fork there. That's your salad fork. Hopefully your guests are listening. Okay, let's hope so. We're gonna get ready for a break and then we'll be back. Power of Dreaming? M. Teresa Lawrence helps us all reconnect with imagination through her renowned Leadership of Play coaching program. Schedule a session with Teresa on Instagram at your trueness to ignite creativity and pursue huge dreams once more. Don't let your spark fade. DM Teresa at your trueness today and reclaim the magic of dreaming. Tired of qualifying your leads and not getting the right clients for you? Join the finest women in real estate and learn how to attract the best clients and increase your referral network. Call now at 951-378-5316. 951-378-5316. Then become one of the finest women in real estate. This is Steve Matley. Join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio Talk Show. I spent decades as a professional construction manager, business owner, real estate developer, and a college educator, and I enjoy learning new things from other people. We talk a lot about real estate, business, and finance, but we cover a diverse range of other topics as well. Some of the topics we've discussed in the past few months include real estate investing, leadership, higher education, ADUs, marketing using technology, multifamily rental property, business strategy, entrepreneurship. You never know who may show up or what they may talk about. So join us right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio. Hey guys, it's Damon, Mr. Foxy, Damon Hart, and I'm here with the Real Men of Real Estate. And I just want to say, hey, come and watch us this Sunday, 1 p.m., live, every Sunday, okay? We're going to be on KCAA Radio, 1050 AM, 106.5 FM. If you got a minute, just tune in. We can't wait to have you here. I'm going to be there. If you can't make it on there, we're going to be at Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, or Android app on Building Solid Foundations channel. So tune in. But you know what you got to do in the meantime. Keep it fast. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. FireUp Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including, inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing, and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Wait. Hello, and welcome back to the Fabulous Lifestyle Show. I'm your host, Cornelius. Special guest host, Brianna, and we have on the phone, Maura Graber of the RSVP Institute of Etiquette. And we're going to stay for the next uh, 11 minutes. We're going to talk about our last one. It's called Fed Up Wife. And after that, we're going to end the show talking about our own Thanksgiving experience because we don't want people to think that all Thanksgivings are bad. Okay, we have one here. Fed Up Wife. I have a situation. My husband's family comes over for Thanksgiving then they pack up all the food when they leave. This year, they're responsible for bringing the macaroni and cheese. And they brought a small container of Stouffer's macaroni and cheese. How do I tell my husband I no longer want to host Thanksgiving dinners? Wow. 
that's <laughs> packing up everything. These are this is food that they've brought themselves, correct? Well, my assumption is just food. Period. Because if they only bought a small thing of macaroni and cheese, how much of that can you actually pack up and take with you? Yeah, that's that's, that's absurd. If they're packing it up and taking it with them, honestly, if they know this in advance. Did they ask the person to bring mac and cheese, or did the person just bring it? No. According to this, they're responsible for it. So that means, like, you tell everybody, you know, when you have a gathering, you bring the cake, I'll bring this, oh, and I'll bring that, I'll bring the wine. So that apparently was their assigned dish. Ah. So that's why they're responsible for it. And so then they bring the, I don't know if you're familiar with the Stouffer's macaroni and cheese mm-hmm. that you get out of the frozen department. And they said they brought a small one. So. I would make sure if you're asking them to bring something this year, ask them to specifically bring enough for so many guests. And if they don't know how to figure that out, tell them it says how many it serves on the back of the package. You know, so they could, you know, should probably double it so that there's plenty. Um, I would make sure and make it really clear if this is something they're doing every year, I'd make it very clear to them or have some as a backup. If these are people that you feel obligated, you have to invite every year, uh, you know, I would, I would have a backup ready. Well, apparently from what it, what they said, it happens every year because they're always having Thanksgiving up there, you, you know, the designated Thanksgiving house. And so this family apparently this isn't the first time something similar has happened because when you get to the point where you no longer want to have it at your house at all right so this person is drove you to what what they say the my wits in mm-hmm. and so and in a situation like that that's that's bad because apparently she doesn't want to cause a disruption between her and her husband but she's pretty much over it Right. And so well, she's got to be really specific and, and point it out to the people. We need it for this many people. And always, I mean, with caterers, they'll always go 10% over. So if you, whatever number you give a caterer, they will pr- bring with them 10% more just for people who have failed to RSVP and have shown up or if there's just you know, turns out that there isn't enough somehow, they will go ahead and bring an extra 10%. So, you know, you need to basically the same, say the same thing to your guests. If your guests are responsible, you're responsible for bringing macaroni and cheese for, let's say you're having eight people total, you know, tell them bring enough for 12 so that we make sure everyone gets as much as they want. Right, because I know with our family, whenever we have something, we always have a, a head count. We send out a head count, well, how many is common and all that, so we we know we'll have an idea of pretty much of how many people are going to be there just for that reason, to make sure that you have enough food for at least initial serving. I mean, of course, you know, sometimes you eat and you get so full and you don't want to eat thing else and maybe some left, you take it with you. But exactly. apparently, if you're having the same thing every year, I mean, I don't know exactly how they do it, but you should have an idea of how many people is going to be there from the previous year or just, just knowing your family. And so to bring the super small dish, you know, you're, you're being really cheap with it, first of all, and you're, not, you're being selfish because you're not thinking about, hey, well, if this thing is so small, it's probably only enough for me and my family and maybe a couple more people. But then to top it off, you take a lot of food with you. And we talked about that, too, about what, what the etiquette, you know, don't, don't pack everything up and take it with you. And so apparently this still goes on. Well, the, I think yeah. the job as a being a host is even a, a huge responsibility in itself. So, you know, when that sort of situation happens, everyone, I'm sure, looks toward the, the host and like, hey, you know, this isn't enough or whatever. Um, to mm-hmm. feed everybody. Right. Exactly. Yes. So I think you've got to really be clear on how many people you're expecting them to bring it for. And if it's, if it's your husband's family members, if it's your family member, you know, one of you's got to step up and say to the person, this is what we need you to do. 
Right, but if it's, I don't know, certain family dynamics are different. So if it's your husband's family, depending on how you get along with them, of course, you don't want to call them because if you call them, it's going to be a big problem. But right. at the same time, if he calls them, it may still be a problem. Because, oh, if, so she's getting you to do it. This is not your idea. This is her. And, you know, so families are, are even anything when you're hosting, like I say, it can become a problem, and it's a big responsibility. So it's something that should be really taken into consideration before you do it. Because in the long run, even like you were saying last time about something happened with the bathroom and all these different issues that go on, are you really prepared for it? Exactly. And, and some, I mean, a, the person who's always putting these on deserves a lot of credit. Absolutely. Beyond. So, you know, this is something, you know, if, if they're going to that much trouble, that, that they're taking this on every year and everyone now has become dependent on going there and planning on that for, you know, I think, I think the COVID lockdown kind of changed things and, uh, and sort of upset the balance. And it almost gave people a, a chance to reset with, with some people that were coming and just saying, you know, we've decided since, you know, since this is the first year after, you know, three years that we didn't get together, you know, as a as a huge family for Thanksgiving, you know, we've decided to kind of tone it down. We're not really, you know, we've kind of gotten used to doing smaller groups, smaller gatherings. I, I think COVID allowed people to make some subtle changes with families. I heard that from a lot of people this year. Right. I know even now, like you say, three years in COVID and now we're going back. A lot of times the situation is that before, you know, we used to go to, let's say we went to grandma's house, but now grandma's not well enough for everybody to come to her house. So now we right. have the person with the next biggest house that hosts the events and dinner. And then you also have a situation like a lot of people, they can't travel. So if they can't travel, especially with the way traffic is now, they can't travel. So you find try to find someone's house that's close. And so if this person who's close or who opened with your home, like I said, they deserve a lot of credit because there's a lot of work that goes on before and after. And so oh, exactly. Oh, it's just unbelievable. And you know, yeah. you get a lot of times when people, you know, everybody once you get full or settled in, you're ready to go. So you start off setting up. You have 10, 15 people help you set up. But in the end, when it's time to go, you're down to two or three. And so, mm -hmm. you know, whatever is not done, then the host has to pick up all the slack. And so we want to be mindful of the host and thankful of the host. And, yeah, like in this situation, it's, you know, it's going to be, hey, you know, why don't you, now that it becomes, it's not what the people do or that they say, they won't say, okay, because people come and they don't bring enough stuff, they do this and do that. It'll be now it's become a war. Oh, you don't want my family over or something like that. So it turns up uh, whatever happens now, it's out of what really the content of the real reason that she doesn't want people over anymore. Right. You know? It's like, like I said, that, 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 you know, COVID gave a lot of people a chance to, like I said, reset. And it just, it, it really changed the way families got together for the holidays. So I'm, I'm curious to see if it goes back to one way or the other over the next couple of years, because this year we wound up not having a, a thing. You know, we wound up making turkey sandwiches. My husband and I were both down with COVID. So right. it, you know, we, we had, and we had been kind of discussing what we wanted to do this year did we want to go to a big family dinner or did we want to keep it small and do something small here? Well, we wound up getting sick before COVID uh, or before Thanksgiving. We didn't have an opportunity to, uh, to really flesh that out and decide what we wanted to do. It was that's off the table now. So. Wow. Yeah, we're going to take a break in a minute. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about just what you said, Maura. We're going to tell each other about how our Thanksgiving went. So we'll be back in a minute. Do you remember the power of dreaming? M. Teresa Lawrence helps us all reconnect with imagination through her renowned Leadership of Play coaching program. 
Schedule a session with Teresa on Instagram at your trueness to ignite creativity and pursue huge dreams once more. Don't let your spark fade. DM Teresa at your trueness today and reclaim the magic of dreaming. Tired of qualifying your leads and not getting the right clients for you? Join the finest women in real estate and learn how to attract the best clients and increase your referral network. Call now at 951-378-5316. 951-378-5316. Then become one of the finest women in real estate. This is Steve Matley. Join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio Talk Show. I spent decades as a professional construction manager, business owner, real estate developer, and a college educator, and I enjoy learning new things from other people. We talk a lot about real estate business and finance, but we cover a diverse range of other topics as well. Some of the topics we've discussed in the past few months include real estate investing, leadership, higher education, ADUs, marketing using technology, multifamily rental property, business strategy, entrepreneurship. You never know who may show up or what they may talk about. So join us right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio. Hey guys, it's Damon, Mr. Foxy, Damon Hart, and I'm here with the Real Men of Real Estate. And I just want to say, hey, come and watch us this Sunday, 1 p.m., live, every Sunday, okay? We're going to be on KCAA Radio, 1050 a.m., 106.5 f.m. If you got a minute, just tune in. We can't wait to have you here. I'm going to be there. If you can't make it on there, we're going to be at Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, or Android app on Building Solid Foundations channel. So tune in. But you know what you got to do in the meantime. Keep it fast. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. Fire Up Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including, inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. All right, all right, welcome back, welcome back. We ran out of step away for a minute, so we just want to thank everyone for letting us use their uh, Thanksgiving experiences. And Maura, before you left, you were telling us about what you and Cliff did for Thanksgiving? We just stayed home. We had COVID. So wow. we, not wanting to infect anyone and being sick, we wound up staying home having turkey sandwiches. We called out and had uh, some uh, deli meats and breads and things delivered to us and made some some turkey sandwiches and watch television. That was our Thanksgiving. Did you watch football? A little bit, yes. Yeah. Oh, good, good. At least you had something to, like take your mind off being ill watching football, taking get some, all that good right. stuff. Right. Yeah. So my Thanksgiving was great. I mean, it always is because with my family, you know, we get together and everybody bring a dish and they bring enough, you know, and everybody help clean up when it's time to go. And so it's just great, and we're five. What did gener- you bring? What did I bring? Yeah. Uh, I bought chicken because we didn't we didn't have turkey this year, so I, I bought chicken and I bought enough chickens for everybody, and wow. we ha- we had our third generation cooks. They stepped up and cooked, and everybody did a good job, you know. And so you know, give the older people a chance to rest and just sit back and eat. And they even help clean up. You know, that's, that's hard to get them to do. They usually try to run, not my family necessarily, but other families. They try to run out when it's time to do the cleaning up. Yes. And, and we have five generations now. Wow. So we had five generations there. And it, it was just great to see everybody, to see all the, the new additions to the family. And, you know, it's it just that you don't think. You get old so, slowly, but you get old. <laughs> but, but it's slow. And it's like, oh, okay, you know, 
you look at them, especially like I hadn't seen some of them in maybe a, over a year since the last time we got together. And, you know, they've had, some of them have had children since then. And you look at them and, and in your mind, they're still this young person. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're young now compared to me, of course, but they're still this little kid. And then they walk in and, you know, you just, oh, well, you, you, you have a husband and a child now? You know, and so it happens. So every moment you get a chance, when you get together for Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year, whatever you get together for, you need to love and appreciate your family. Because That's right. it, it's just, uh, it's amazing. A lot of time I hear stories about, you know, this one guy once told me, oh, Whenever my family get together, you know it's going to be a fight. I'm thinking, wow, oh, God. That, that's that's different, you know, because like I said, we we we've, we've never had a situation like that, or, or we've never had a situation where somebody say, oh, well, if that person's coming, I'm not coming. You know, it's always, oh man, I just can't wait to see everybody. And so yeah. it, it it was really great, and we're looking forward to Christmas. And so, Maura, thank you. You want to close out with anything? Uh, no, I just. Uh... Happy holidays to everyone. Happy holidays. Well, why don't you just tell everybody where you're located and then how they can reach you if they want to. I'm in Ontario, the RSVP Institute of Etiquette. This is I'm going into my 34th year in 2024. So 34 years teaching etiquette in uh, a business where a lot of people thought I was nuts to be starting the business to begin with. But I saw a real need for it, and there are a lot of people out there, um, especially, like I said, there's been such a reset with the COVID lockdowns. So there are a lot of young people out there that are, you know, that lost a, a year or two of connecting with other people and now want to build their social skills back up. So I've, I've actually been, until I got sick with COVID again, uh, quite busy this fall. Right. So, Good. Excellent. As a matter of fact, matter of fact, uh, you you mentioned the Graber Olive House. So yes. a lot of people they don't know what that is, but it's been around over a hundred years since eighteen ninety four. Eighteen ninety four. Next year it'll be a hundred and thirty years. Wow. Yeah. And, and that's a, that's amazing. You that's, know, it's a historic landmark in Ontario. Right. So to you, you out there, if you get a chance, if you're in Ontario. Stop by the uh, Olive House and take a look at it. I wouldn't know the first time I went there, I was amazed by some of the things that were there, these old uh, presses and, you know, for the way you process the, the uh, canning olives and the way you can them. It was unbelievable. Okay. Yeah, people are always very surprised. I also do etiquette consulting for the, uh, the HBO show The Gilded Age by Julian Fellows that did right. Downton Abbey. And so the, the Gilded Age just started back up uh, at the end of October, which was nice. Season two came back, and uh, it's been it's been fun to watch that on on Sunday evenings again. Okay, so. all right, great. Well, thanks for ha having uh, thanks for being here with the last two weeks with us. I look forward to talk to you again. I'm sure we'll get together at another time. So we're gonna call yeah. it off. All right, and I look forward to seeing everybody. Thank you again. Have a happy. Uh, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and we'll be back January 7th with our special guest, family therapist, as we talk about the construction in the direction of the family. Thank you and have a good day. Goodbye. Listen to KCAA Loma Linda for less confrontation and more information. This segment sponsored by the all-new Ram.